what up YouTube? Uh, it's Matt here, uh, Team HOC. Um, back from our regionals uh, in a worm on Saturday. Um, what I'm doing here is just a, it's a kind of a twofold. It, it's a deck of the month for my channel, um, as well as a video response um, for Obito Dulles' channel. He actually did a deck profile for me. Um, while we were at the regional, uh, really chill guy. Um, actually, we had to play uh, against each other in round, I want to say four, three. Uh, he had really bad hands, and I got him 2 0. So, uh, but, anyways, uh, I want to give a shout out to him and a thanks for uh, hooking me up with a shout out and a deck profile. I've got a lot of subs in the last, you know, 48 hours since he posted the video. Um, so, I want to give a you know, a big shout out to him. Um, also, want to give a shout out to uh, Infernity Archfiend. Uh, he top aided with uh, Frog OT or FTK. Uh, he lost in top. Uh, he lost in top eight to um, my boy Stevie, uh, who was playing Flame Sworn. So, I just want to give a shout out to him. He's uh, started. A, he started a new channel uh, just a few days ago and. It's already got like a hundred and thirty some odd subs, so I figure help him out, get, get him some more. So, anyways, um, without further ado, uh, we're gonna go ahead and go through the deck profile. Um, this is Frog Monarchs. Um, it's updated from the video that was posted by Obita Duelist. Um, I also just want to kind of go over some things because there was a lot of comments that were posted. I just don't think a lot of people grasped the concept of the deck, or maybe just some of the kind of combos of the deck. So, anyways, um, it's Frog Monarchs. So we'll start with the Frog portion. Um, three substitute. Uh, essentially, uh, you can tribute a monster, including himself, to special summon a frog uh, from your deck. Uh, it helps with it's a thinning engine, so um, if you can get you know him out um, as well as one of the three copies of Swap Frog, you can essentially you know pitch Swap Frog uh, to special summon another one. Use his effect to pitch a you know a frog or a, you know a Ronin Toten or whatever to the graveyard. It just helps thin the deck out. Fills the graveyard uh, for your special summoning, so you can get mo the monarchs out. Um, got two treeborn, of course. Um, you know it's monarchs treeborn. Bring them back during the standby phase. Cool combos you can do with enemy controller, all that good stuff. So just gives you greater speed. One rodent tonin. Um, there are essentially five targets if you include the two um, treeborns uh, for him to be special summoned. So you. Pitch a remove a frog from your graveyard to special summon him. He can't be used for a synchro material, but he's got 2,000 defense, and you know you tribute him for one of the monarchs. Um, of course, monarch portion three Caius, one of the best cards in the game right now. Um, remove a monster, deal damage if it's a dark, or remove a card I should say, uh, deal damage if it's a dark monster that you remove, or remove back rows, things like that, so it's just a really good. I'm running three Ryza, um, the reason I'm running three is really, you you put them a turn back, so you, you sack him, you know, bring him out, pop a card, they're already down a turn now, because they have to redraw their card, and nothing's more funny than just dropping one, then dropping another, then dropping another. So it's and it's easy to do in the deck. I'm only running one Thestalos. Um, his effect is really inconsequential. I mean, it, it's good, but it's, it's nothing game breaking. So I'm only running one. Uh, he's got twenty four you know twenty four attacks just like the other monarchs. Pitch a card. If it's a monster, you deal a hundred damage for every star they have. Uh, I did it at the regional. I you know bounced a, a Gores with Ryza, and he had like three cards in hand. Next turn, I attributed the Ryza for Thestalos and hit the Gores. It was pretty funny. So, uh, I'm running one Dark Dust Spirit. Uh, he's a field clearer if you're for every uh, face-up monster. Um, other than himself, he destroys. And then you just get an attack. So, you just get, if, if it's early, you're essentially just one for one. He bounces back. You know, just keep re repeating. So, the deck also runs three uh, Light and Darkness Dragon. The reason why it runs three is it's so easy to get out. I don't think people understand that just because it's a two tribute monster, it does not make it any di any di more difficult to bring out. There are tons of special summoning components in the deck: the frogs, the treeborns. Um, he's very very easy to get out. When he dies, you clear your field, you bring out 
you know, another monster. You bring out a monarch. You bring out a, a frog in defense mode. I mean, he substitutes got 2,000 defense. Most monsters are not going to get over that. So that's why I'm running three. He's just really good. Make your opponent waste his resources to get rid of him. I mean, this is this is what the format's come to. You wait, make them waste their their resources, except for infernities. I mean, you know, they're gonna they want to burn the cards in their hand, you know. But I mean, other than that, it, it it's just it's easy to get out, and these definitely help. Uh, battle fader, opponent declares a direct attack. You drop him, negates the end, ends the battle phase. So I mean, it just it's ridiculous. Yes, it's susceptible to. Um, Royal Oppression, sorry, lost my train of thought there for a second. But still, even though it's susceptible to that, it's still a ridiculously good card. Um, for the format, uh, this is a new change in the deck, maining two crow. Uh, the reason why I'm maining two crow, I understand it is a minus one. Generally, I wouldn't recommend maining crow, but this deck needs to make sure that um, I'm able to disrupt my opponent so I can keep getting monarchs out. Um, get big plays out of the way. Um, you know, make sure Wolf doesn't get in so they can get popped for Celestia. Uh, make sure that Infernities can't go off and go crazy. Um, the Frog OTK, uh, it, it just, it, it's really good. Um, in this particular build, I believe, it's testing really well. I changed it after I got back, and I've really liked the change ever since. Um, one Car Trooper. Plenty of stuff that you want in the graveyard. Uh, the frogs mainly, of course. So this just in a, it becomes a beater. This deck doesn't have just drop beaters. So this you know makes up for that. And then when you know he gets destroyed, he's a he's a floater. Gets you a card. Uh, Trigodia, tribute fodder. Um, you can steal opponents' monsters. Uh, just you know, I've there's been occasions where I drop it, uh, pitch a light and darkest dragon, take a stardust. It, it, things like that happen. So. Really good. Uh, I generally amass a good amount of cards in my hand, especially after dropping um, Light and Darkness Dragon. So it just it just another good component of the deck. Gores, I don't set a whole lot other than monsters, so makes it e he's easy to get out. Uh, I've had a lot of occasions where you know they'll hit me, I'll drop Gores, get a token, tribute both for Light and Darkness Dragon. When Light and Darkness Dragon gets destroyed, bam, I got a 2700 beater. Um, a lot of decks can't get over gores, so it just it makes it a whole lot more consistent. Uh, two, I was running three. I'm only running two soil exchanges. The third was just too much. It was just becoming a dead draw in, in a lot of occasions. So uh, two soil exchange works, tributing, um, you know, take you know, allowing me to clear out monsters. Even though I lose my battle phase, I still with the monarchs it, it lets me keep advantage. Two enemy controllers, as I mentioned earlier, Treeborn shenanigans uh, with enemy controller, taking tuners, taking synchros, it, you know, tripping them off, you know, for my monarchs and all that good stuff. So it, it's a good card too. Uh, one avarice, filling the car, filling the graveyard. Uh, I can reuse my monarchs, light and darkest dragon, all that good stuff. One brain staple, MST staple, heavy staple. Uh, for the traps, essentially running four traps. Uh, two. Threatening Roars, not really big fan of Threatening Roar, but slows down my opponent, allows me to have access to monsters so I can tribute. One Dust Tornado, get rid of the back row. One Phoenix to get rid of the Synchros. Um, I'm going to be testing Spirit Water Oi when I get them. I should have them sometime this week. I had to order them because I didn't have any. So... Uh, I really was surprised, but yeah, I couldn't find any. So yeah, that's the main deck. Uh, quickly go over the side deck. Um, this is mostly for the local meta. Uh, two prime material. Um, tribute. Uh, has a destruction negation. Has life point or burn disruption. Uh, so the, you know, if I run into those OTK with frogs, uh, you know, I can make sure that I don't. This will prevent me from you know being OTK if I can get it out quick enough. One Cyber Dragon for the Machina um, or Gadget matchup. One more Crow. I'm just amassing a lot of graveyard hate um, with Infernities, with Light Sworn, even Machina in some occasions, you know, um, getting rid of their fortress, you know, their fortresses and getting rid of, you know, getting rid of uh, targets for their uh, Avarice and stuff like that. So, System Down, two. Machine hate. 
um, for the quick draw stuff. More machine hate. X Saber. And then three crevice. Crevice is amazing. Don't even want to tell you otherwise. It's amazing. I've, I, I was only running two at the regional. Now meaning three. It is uh, just amazing. It, it's extra crows essentially for me. Uh, allows me to um, avoid big plays from Light Sworn, uh, Infernity, things like that. So um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I've gone over the, l the little 10 minute mark, so I want to end this video. Um, comment, rate, subscribe. Thanks for all the new guys that have subbed to me. Uh, I've got videos coming up soon, so keep your eyes out for them. Um, Infernity uh, Archfiend, check them out. Opio Duelist, thanks for the shout out. Peace.